everyone for Rush for putting this together. You guys for showing up. What a nice multicultural crowd, kind of. Uh, <laughs> not scared of you. Okay, cool, 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 cool. What, uh, what's happening? Oh, all right, get settled in, get settled in, sweet. I'm just gonna stare at you guys for the next seven and a half minutes till we all get on the same enlightened page. All right, never mind, fuck it. Uh, make some noise if you got immigrants in the house. That's what I wanna know. How many people not born here? Yeah? Sweet. Not as many as the neo-Nazis on the internet made me believe, so <laughs> I don't know what their problem is. I think they don't live in the same reality as the rest of us. Okay, cool. I'm actually, yeah, I'm an immigrant too. I'm a, well, I'm a Canadian citizen now. I have been for like 15 years. Uh, it's my fourth citizenship from four different countries, though. Yeah, I'm starting to think that I'm the problem. <laughs> yeah, I'm what you would call a career immigrant, you know? I, uh, I just keep moving, just keep moving. I'm Canadian now, obviously. Uh, I lived in India for a while, I'm half Indian. I'm assuming there are some Indian people here. Yeah, make some noise, no? Oh, wow. That almost never happens. <laughs> are you all driving Uber tonight? What's happening here? Okay. Uh, it is Thursday. I also uh, lived in Bangladesh for a little, little while. I'm half uh, Bangladeshi. Any Bangladeshi people here? A yeah. few people, yes. <laughs> That's the appropriate number. I'm, I mean, I'm half Indian and uh, half Bengali, which means I'm not welcome in either country. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those who know, know. <laughs> Those who know, know. And, and I was originally born and raised uh, in Russia, in Moscow. Uh, I'm not joking, that's true. That's just 100% true. And uh, don't be too surprised. Brown people are everywhere. We're like a Taylor Swift of people. Yeah, you cannot escape us. You cannot escape us. Uh, I've been here for a while, uh, but one thing, you know, I've never been to North America before coming to Canada, and if you've lived abroad, you know that Canada has a very nice reputation. In fact, people say you should come here because it's a nicer version of America. You know, it's like the United States, but cuter, more adorable. That kind of a thing. And when I got here, I realized it's nothing like America. It's not even the right country to compare Canada with at all. Because Canada's a huge, giant winter wasteland, you know, <laughs> full of high functioning alcoholics, obsessed with hockey. Okay, Canada is Russia with gay rights. Okay? Some of you are not fond of that comparison. All right, so let's continue with that line of thought. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about the both countries are places where summer isn't a season, it's a time of day, you know? <laughs> Canadian summer is like noon to three, a couple of days in July, that's what we're looking at. That's why they legalize weed, guys. I mean, what else are you gonna do? The sun sets at 3 p.m., you're gonna get home in the dark, smoke some weed, watch SpongeBob SquarePants. We legalize depression is what's happening. That's, that's, that's what we've done, we had to, we had to. Uh, do we have any uh, stoners in the audience? Make some noise if you like smoke some weed, yeah, yeah. It's legal now. Legal. Well, it's legal. It's legal to smoke. It's not legal to sell, which is pretty weird to me. Because, like, before legalization, everybody used to sell weed back in the day, right? It was kind of like, now if you want to sell, you need a $10 million license for the right to sell weed. It's weed. It grows anywhere. Now you need $10 million. I'll have to be a Coke dealer first, you know? <laughs> Like, back, back before legal, I, everybody used to sell weed back in the day. I used to sell weed, still do. I used to sell weed back in the day. Talk to me later. <laughs> they wouldn't even give you your passport till you chopped your first ounce. And now it's like, I mean, you know what? Once somebody once said, like, you don't look like a dealer, you look like an accountant. Those are like, I'm like, yeah, that's why I got away with it. <laughs> you ever seen Breaking Bad? I'm not even joking. Early days, I was still bad at this. I was walking around the streets of Toronto with a poorly packaged gym bag full of weed, sticking up the whole street. Two cops walked past me, sniffed the air, and immediately tackled the white guy next to me. <laughs> I was offended. I was offended. <laughs> See, a little bit. Pablo Escobar was brown skin. Come on, man. this is not that hard to believe. It's not that hard to believe. I, but, but honestly, the reason I got good at hiding it from law enforcement is because I had to hide it from my mom first. Okay? <laughs> you can keep a secret from a brown mom. <laughs> you can steal an election. Just straight up. Straight up steal an election. Yeah. 
Speaking of what, actually, uh, you know, the one thing that all the people on this lineup have from all these countries, we got representation from India, Bangladesh, China, Vietnam, Singapore, Malaysia. You know what we all have in common all across Asia, aside from racism, is, <laughs> is we all got screwed by the British. Yes, exactly. Thanks for playing along with that joke. <laughs> Beautiful. Flawless. Uh, they <laughs> uh, is it my time already? One minute, okay, one minute. I just want to rag on the Brits for a while, but okay. I feel like you can only call yourself, you can either call yourself Great Britain, or you can have Boris Johnson as Prime Minister. Okay? You pick one. But honestly, they, they delayed Brexit again for like the fourth, fifth time. I lost count. Like, the UK is so colonial, they won't even grant independence to themselves. Okay? You just can't. Maybe in a few years, we'll be ready for some freedom. Mm. I'm gonna close off on this quick one. Anybody here have tattoos at all? Or are we all afraid of our moms? Yeah, me too, yeah. I hid them for so long, that's why they're on my sleeves, right? I was wearing full sleeves in July, visiting my mother. Um, but tattoos did change my life, because uh, I used to get stopped at every airport back in the day, you know, every airport, every time, 100% random search. Since I got my tattoos, I get shushed through. That number dropped to zero. They don't even look at me anymore. And my friends are like, you know, it's probably because, you know, Islamic terrorists wouldn't get body art because it's haram and it's against Islam. And I'm like, I don't think TSA is up to speed on Islamic <laughs> fundamentals. <laughs> the ins and outs, what's allowed and not. It probably has something to do with me because I'm a mess at the airport, okay? My eyes are bloodshot from a pre-flight joint. I got Doritos dust all over me. You know, my, my neck pillows flapping behind me as I'm running through fine turn with, I can't do math. Where is gate E71? Is it next to C3? I don't know what's going on. Got tattoos on me. I'm a mess. Airport security looks at me like, that guy could use a little religion. Uh, yeah. Hey, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, at Terror Suspect. That is my real... Give me my passport. I don't know what to tell you. Have a good night, guys. See you guys.